Hey guys, and welcome to another Titan Tries. We are going to be looking at something uh, that I've never heard of today, actually. This game was gifted to me by Jimmy Fails. And it is called Quantum Theory. Uh, I don't think many people have actually heard of this game, if I'm being 100% honest. It seems to be like one of those games that massively went under the radar back in 2010 when uh, it originally dropped. So this game is made by, uh, or at least it was published by Tecmo Koi, uh, but it was produced by a company called Team Tachyon, who was actually a subsidiary, subsidiary of um, Tecmo. Uh, and they were actually set up in 2007. Never heard of them, hmm? Well, that's not surprising because they <laughs> didn't make many games of note, shall we say. Uh, they made Quantum Theory, they made Dead Knights, and they made Rygar, the Battle of Argus. Yeah, and as far as I could tell, that's, that's kind of pretty much all they made. Um, but, you know, this game, I guess, was their first uh, release. So what is it? Well... This is the Gears of War we have at home. So here we are introduced to our main character, who's definitely not Marcus Phoenix. No, sir. Uh, and in truth, Visually here, this is um, something quite interesting, to be honest. We are running away from a tower that we have apparently destroyed, uh, I, I guess, with a unknown, questionably human female companion, I guess, whilst this place is literally falling apart as we escape. It's very janky. It's crunchy to play, and it lacks any kind of polish whatsoever. These are the enemies. Uh, they are called Nosferatu, uh, and they appear to be some kind of something. <laughs> I guess the game hasn't really explained it. Uh, all I have played of this game is what we're about to see here. Um, we have we have one weapon that we cannot get rid of we do get others and we can also throw our friend at the enemies to kill them uh, which I'm guessing the developers thought was a lot cooler than it actually is um, Unfortunately, what really takes the uh, you know interest out of these actions is just how crunchy the animations are. It feels like you know there should be a lot more frames than there actually is. Now throwing Nyx here at enemies is incredibly overpowered. You'll also notice that when enemies die, they just explode into puffs of nothing, which I'm guessing. Uh, is probably <laughs> for optimization reasons, I suppose. I mean, I guess you could probably say it's artistic as well, but come on, come on. Now, our character here, Sid, is basically a personality-less blank slate, at least for I can I can tell. Um, He's certainly no Mar Marcus Phoenix, that's for sure. This game is such a, a weird copy of Gears of War. Um, down to the, the roadie run that you see here. Even the symbols that are coming up that are explaining what the buttons do, context sensitive buttons, uh, are basically exactly the same as what Gears of War gives you. Even the jump animation looks ripped straight from it. 
Now... <sighs> Mm-hmm. So I guess we don't really care about our friend, our friend Nyx, but I guess we were just using her to... I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know what's going on. And I think that's by design. You're not really supposed to understand what's going on here. I am getting Bayonetta vibes. So there, at least we have a clear mission. We are going into these towers called arcs, which exist yeah. for some reason. An abandoned city. Another arc. Another tower to take down. And this is Sid's quest, jumping from tower to tower. Looks like the we don't know why. Well, that sounds ominous. I mean, he's calling the other people humans. So I'm guessing he's kind of uh, admitting that he, he is not human. I'm not really sure. Um, there is a little bit of blurb here on these title screens, but it doesn't really mean much. Um, without any other context of the game. Uh, it's explaining here that the world is empty, a decaying mass, home to only a few remaining survivors. I dedicate my life to bettering humanity, and this is my reward, cities... Something, 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 something. Hey, are you listening to me? Why are you heading for the tower? Figures what's left of the support troops from the other colonies? I haven't heard of any support coming our way. I've never seen a weapon like you. You're not from this island. Stand down. He's not the enemy. I'm still here. But he's... Enough! My name is Franz Kroth. I'm the leader of this militia squad. We're part of the assault on that tower out there. You got a name? They're here. Name's Sid. Just Sid. Push him back. Come on. Okay, so that infected guy you two. Let's go. didn't die, for, uh, didn't explode for some reason. He's like the only one that hasn't. Um, so now we have a squad of friends. I guess. So our weapon is called the Revenant, I guess. Um, yeah, so we've got a squad that we're going to be tagging along with. A human squad, obviously. Uh, there's no personality to them. Uh, they may have names, but, uh, well, the the leader bloke's got a name, but the other guys are just generic. Although I think later on they actually do reference them. Uh, I'm not sure whether we're supposed to be caring about these guys or, you know, they're just background dressing. But I think they are just background dressing, to be honest. That's how uh, I've <laughs> treated them anyway. So, we're actually going to be fighting different enemies here. Ooh. We're going to be fighting infected humans. Yes. Uh, but they're not really zombies. They are just like the enemies we fought in the intro. Except they're different colors. And they have human weapons. Now, <sighs> these enemies are really, really dull to fight. Uh... They're quite happy to just stand there and let you blast them. 
Uh, there's quite a few of them as well, but you can see what I mean. Every time you kill one, it will just explode. Sometimes, if you kill one, it will actually pull you uh, out and show you a cutscene of them actually dying. It lasts for about four frames, and it's really, really obnoxious. It will just change your view uh, and give you a nice close-up of the uh, enemy dying, which, again, in theory, sounds interesting, but it probably would have been better if it wasn't a solid second with about three frames of animation in there. And when the game pulls control away from you, you can die. <laughs> yep, yep. The game will actually completely take control away from you, and you can die in those few frames. Uh, I only actually die once, I believe, uh, in this run, and that is when the game does indeed <laughs> pull, the, pull the control away from me. During a really dull part of gameplay, I might add, as well, and uh, after seeing where the game puts us, yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm out, yep. Yeah. That's such a bullshit, hacky uh, way to die. Um, so we actually have another weapon here. This is like a human weapon. I think it's called a grave digger because I guess it's edgy and cool. Uh, it kind of feels like sort of the Lancer, I guess, from Gears of War. but And it kind of looks like it a little bit as well. Even to the point where it has that spinning middle disc. Uh, that the Lancer actually has on the uh, ammunition. Um, well, just above the magazine on the Lancer. Although it does not have a cool chainsaw. Nope, this game, to my knowledge, doesn't have any kind of melee combat. I could have just completely missed it. Uh, that is absolutely possible. As for the controls, they are exactly the same as Gears. Literally exactly the same. Uh, with the uh, exception of there's no active reload, which is uh, a shame. I actually was quite surprised when I was playing through this game to realise that there was no active reload system because they've copied everything else so perfectly. <laughs> I say perfectly, if it's not really perfect, it's... You know, as I said, it's, it's the Gears of War we have at home. I would like to say this is Japanese Gears of War, but that's unfair because, you know, that almost makes it sound like because it's Japanese, it's bad. And that's just not the case. This is just very much the uh, basic version. We have these Watcher um, drones as well, which we shoot and they unlock like storyline and little tips about what's going on, which we will be looking at later on. Uh, but they're really cryptic. They don't really tell you an awful lot. See, that's what I mean there. See, we got a nice close-up of him dying for some reason. And the further we get into this, the game starts doing it more and more. Uh, again, it doesn't serve any purpose. Now, one of the control problems that I had with this game is... Okay, let's, let's, let's talk about Gears of War, for instance. When you go back and play Gears of War, even on the original 360, we're not even talking about the remakes or anything like that. We're talking about the original game. The controls are really smooth. They're flawless. They do exactly what they were designed to do. Right? In this game, simple things like putting a crosshair over an enemy is an arduous task. There seems to be quite the dead zone on the controller. And once you push the analog stick out of that dead zone, then you get some kind of weird controller acceleration nonsense. It's it's odd. And um, it's something that you could probably get used to, but it, yeah, it's not great. And we have a grenade launcher here, the Hell Launcher, because, again, that's edgy and cool. Um... You know, you think grenade launcher, this weapon's going to be badass. It, 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 it's not. It's it's really not. And you'll see <laughs> you'll see some curious oddities as well, like that tower. some of the um, crosshairs. Look at our main character. Oh, it just looks awful. 
first people who saw that thing said it rose up from this lost age wasteland over just a few years. Some even say it grew there by itself. Nothing ever came out, and nobody could ever get in. The tower was just there, but now it started changing. The Diabolosis erupted from the tower and started destroying what's left of the city. It's even spread into our colony now. Soldier infected by the Diablo Cisco is nuts. They start killing their own guys. Got no choice but to kill them first. Now militias from all the colonies around here have teamed up for an all-out assault on the tower to put an end to the Diablo Cis. But the tower wouldn't let anybody in. Anybody who reached the tower was killed by the tower's defenses. We've been wiped out. Mm-hmm. Well, that doesn't sound good. So, we have to breach the tower's defences. So, I'm not sure who we are. I mean, obviously, we're going to find that out um, as we play the game. I assume <laughs> nothing's guaranteed in this game, I guess. But, uh, yeah, I assume we're going to actually find out some kind of backstory of who we are and why we are. But So, that's the rub of this game. These towers lifted up out of the ground. From what I can understand, the world was already apocalyptic and ruined before these towers started, but I'm not 100% sure. There's, you can kind of see the weapon combat here as well. Like, we've got this cool, like, automatic rifle, but it just doesn't feel good at all. The shots don't feel like they're doing any damage. The, the hit detection looks like it's just flying through the enemies and not actually doing anything. Um, you know, bearing in mind, this game was full price. When I started playing this, I thought, you know, okay, if this was, you know, a budget game, 20, 20, 30 pounds, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I guess I could. No. No, 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 no. This was full price. This was just as expensive as the real McCoy. Also, I love that checkpoint that we just walked past there. The second you move through the checkpoint, all the enemies spawn in. Um, which, you know, loads of games do. Ah, here we go. This is me working out what, trying to work out what this weapon does. And I'm like, what the hell is this? This is less use than a chocolate teapot. So yeah, I know um, a lot of web, uh, a lot of games do that. You know, you hit a checkpoint, enemies spawn, but <laughs> most games try and hide it a little bit better. You know, they don't just have the enemies appear straight in front of you. Now this game also has multiplayer, and the only reason I know it has multiplayer is because I looked at the achievements, and over half of the achievements are multiplayer based. Um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say the multiplayer in this game died really bloody quickly because uh, I did some digging on true achievements and I had a look at you know what percentage of people would unlock these achievements and <laughs> yeah yeah it, it, it wasn't a large amount now this game actually came out on a PS3 as well PS3 didn't have Gears of War PS5 might but the PS3 didn't. So, I mean, if you're looking for that kind of experience, but I'm pretty sure you could have got so many better options than this. Uh, I mean, I, I, this is a tough sell, man. <laughs> I'm not really sure who this game is for, to be honest. Um, I mean... There's been no story at all up until this point. There's nothing to hook you in. The, the only thing the game has given us to really get us engaged and keep us interested uh, is the combat. And the combat is just so painfully generic and awful. Look at that for a crosshair. It looks like a terrible tattoo, it, you know. And I think that's going to be a theme as well. This weapon that we start off with is, it's sort of the only one that we've had thus far that's actually worth using. However, it's such a 
boring weapon to use. Um, I kept switching up to the automatic a uh, grave digger or whatever it was called. But the trouble is, like, the grave digger does so such pitifully small amounts of damage. I just, I had to concede and just keep switching to this. Eventually, I did start enjoying using this weapon because it seems to be relatively powerful. But, yeah, it, it, it definitely got old quickly. And you can see how... Well, like the perfect example there, I shot the enemy and the enemy didn't duck behind cover. He just disappeared into cover. This is what I mean. This is the, there's so, so much jank to this game. And I think it comes down to the fact that there's so few frames in the animation. Um, although the enemy is ducking behind cover because there's so few frames, you can't see it. So it looks like he's disappearing. It's just these little quality of life things that shouldn't be in a full price game. I don't know why that guy's so upset that um, we're getting praised up and he isn't. Um, you know, <laughs> it's 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 the dialogue is. <sighs> I w I wouldn't say the dialogue is terrible, but it's not great. It's really not great. I suppose they're trying to inject a little bit of humour um, to flesh out this guy's character, but you know we don't even know his name. Um, and he's probably gonna die. Let's be fair. At least I assume he is. Now, another thing you can tell, uh, or you probably tell with this game, is so far we've had two types of enemies. We've had big ones and we've had little ones. And there's not really much, uh, much strategy to the battles. Uh, it's shoot the thing until it explodes. That's basically it. And you would assume that these big ones are pretty burly and they're pretty tough but they're really not you know in Gears of War when you saw a boomer coming you know your asshole puckered a little bit you know you started to sweat because things were about to go down in this game it's just a bigger version of, of the, the generic enemy And now we have this black goo, which apparently is the goo that turns people into infected slaves, uh, eating vehicles and stuff. Now, there is actually a little log later on, uh, I think from when we destroy a watcher, that does go into that a little bit. It doesn't exactly, you know, explain the science behind what's going on, but it does mention that. Now, one thing that I did find interesting after recording this video and doing some research, uh, apparently the 360 version runs really, really smoothly and the PS3 version does not. Now, I can't comment on the PS3 version, although I have seen videos of it and oof, it gets crunchy for sure. Um, but that is one good thing I can say about this game. It didn't skip a beat frame rate right wise. And, uh, you know, that's, I guess, one of the kind of things I can say about it. But then when you look at what we're dealing with here, there isn't a huge amount going on. Although I would say the battles in this game do feel a little bit better than the original Gears. Because in the original Gears, you're only ever fighting three possibly four enemies at a time the the scale wasn't really there whereas the engagements in this game do seem to go on a little bit more there's, there's always more enemies to fight now you would have thought having more enemies to fight would be exciting but there's no excitement here there's no rushing enemies with with some kind of melee intent uh, we don't even have grenades to use um, to mix up tactics and strategy for instance you know trying to get grenades around corners you know the emergence holes from gears for instance were exciting and just just take a look at this truck take a look at that this is unreal 3 i assume 
And this looks like it's been lifted from a PS2 game. This was a full price game. I know I've already um, mentioned that, but this game is full price. Now, here's the rub, though. All the time I was playing this, was I having fun? Uh, yeah, actually, I did enjoy playing this. And um, I didn't want to stop. I always intended in doing my, uh, you know, my half an hour, because that's, that's what we try and do, do half an hour snippets of, of gameplay. But I actually went on a little bit longer than that. And I'm probably, yeah, you can see that guy just spawn in there. Um, and I'm probably going to go back and play some more of this. Will I ever complete this game? I don't know. I have heard that when we get to the tower, the gameplay kind of changes and it gets a little bit more interesting. I don't know whether that's true. But I, I do want to find out. But, yep, we have another uh, engagement with the, the same two enemy types again. Now, the locusts, obviously. You know, you had the generic grub locusts. They obviously all look the same. Uh, but they were fun to fight. And you had the um, screechers guys. I can't remember what they're called now. Um, you had the boomers. There was a lot of variation in Gears of War. Uh, with the different enemy types. And like I said, you just had more options. You had the Hammer of Dawn at times. You had loads of different weapons. You had um, grenades. You had emergence holes. You had tighter, more brutal combat. This game just has point the gun, shoot the gun. At least so far. Unless, you know, things change later on. Which they may well do. So how did this game do on the reviews then? Well... <laughs> this game got absolutely panned. I think one of the highest review scores I saw it get was 2.5 out of 10. Yeah, it really was that low. Now, of course, there are people defending this, saying that this game isn't that bad and it's a good time, but there's always people that, you know, enjoy shitty games. And you know what? If you enjoy a shitty game, there's nothing wrong with that, man. More power to you. I'll be honest. I think 2 out of 5, uh, 2 out of 10, I should say. It, that's a little bit brutal, I think. I mean, from what I've played, it it's certainly not that bad. Um, I would have given it probably a 4 or a 5, but I haven't finished the game yet, so I can't really say. Maybe it does get really bad later on. Who knows? Maybe it gets better. So we actually have the sniper rifle here. Uh, it, it's a, a copy of the long shot from Gears War. Shocking, right? You know. What do you mean it's a copy? Well, uh, it has basically the same aiming system. It is a one-shot kill weapon. Every time you come out, you uh, every time you come out of um, the uh, look down sights mode, you reload. And look at this. Look at this. I, I couldn't believe we can go in there. Invisible walls. In the combat uh, arenas. So yeah, this sniper rifle is a one-hit kill. Doesn't seem to matter where you hit the enemies. It's just like pretty much a one-hit kill. Uh, and for that, it's fine. It just doesn't have that satisfying um, sound to it. You know, when you use the long shot and you fire that off, that is a meaty, meaty rifle. And it feels like it should split someone half. This just, it just found, it kind of feels like a little pop gun. Uh, but it is nice that it does take out the enemy grunts in one hit. Um, also, another thing, actually that's not true what I said earlier. Uh, this gun, you can stay looking down the scope whilst it reloads whereas in Gears of War I don't think that was the case I think um, you know that if you stayed looking down the sights you wouldn't reload this is a bit of a bad situation to be in here getting flanked by two enemies I actually thought I was going to die here gee it'd be really nice if we could go into that other room and get a better position on this guy but hey what do I know 
Now, as for the overall art design of the game, I, I think this game just looks terribly boring. The weapons look like a mess. A mangled mess. It looks like it was just rejected garbage from other games. There's just... There's too much going on with them. They're too busy. They look, they look almost like the artist just drew a load of squiggles on a piece of paper and then somebody modeled that into a um, into a 3D model. And the same with the armor that these guys are wearing. It just looks painfully, agonizingly generic. You can see the hit detection there as well. That guy, like, mantling over that bit of cover there. He... <laughs> he, wasn't, he wasn't even really touching the cover. He just kind of floated over the top. Full price game, everybody. Full price. So let's start advancing. Now, I will say those uh, barrels, when they explode, that is quite a satisfying um, explosion. And we can see the, the shotgun here just not doing much. Not doing much at all. There's no destruction either that I've uh, noticed. And that's one thing that I did like about Gears as well, especially when you got up to Gears 2. Where if, enemy w if an enemy was behind cover, you could actually chip away at that cover so you could get an angle at them. And the enemy could also destroy your cover too. Approximately 800 volunteers from surrounding colonies gathered to fight the, 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 the Diabolus. And then observation reports. Gravedigger, main weapon of human militia. Lighter version of previous weapon. Okay. I like the way they say the Gravedigger is a lighter version of the previous weapon that the humans used. And it already looks like a, a normal human couldn't lift or use it. So I'd like to see what the original version was like. I mean, who knows when they do a Quantum Theory 2. Maybe we'll see it. I mean, I'm not going to hold my breath or anything like that, but you never know. Oh, th uh, this was fun. I like the way... Stay sharp, people. I do like the way your men will run on from you and patiently wait for you. Now, that chain link fence as well is quite funny. It's literally like <laughs> it's just standing up um, and nothing is surrounding it. It's literally cut free from its, um, from its frame. And it only falls over once you've had that conversation, which is uh, <laughs> it's cute. Yeah. It's adorable. It's completely adorable. So we have a major battle ahead of us, or so we've just been told over the radio. Um, I mean, not really. It, it's just, it's just what we've been doing um, so far. Really, it's just more of the same, same enemies, same numbers, just fighting our way to the tower. Now, when we actually get to the tower, it does mix it up a little bit. And I do mean a little bit, yeah. We actually uh, have to think about what we're doing a little bit. Now, these guys, I think they should have um, massively upped the amount of damage they do. Because they're carrying these massive, hulking, great big machine guns. But, yeah. You know, I th yeah, those guys should have been tougher, I think. Because unless they add something major later on, there is no challenge to this combat at all. And I think for the medium difficulty, it, yeah, it hasn't really been balanced that well. The only, like I said, the only time I actually die in this, and that's later on, is when the game pulls me off into one of those stupid, um, look how cool our head splodges moments. And then as the game puts me back, <laughs> I'm dead on the floor. It's like, thanks. That's great. I wouldn't mind if the head splodges are cool, but they're not. They're really bad, really jank, really low frame rate. Just, 
I don't mean the frame rate, as in the game is struggling. I mean there's just not many frames of animation in anything. Like you could see with that guy when he was ducking behind that vehicle there. He just looked like he disappeared behind it. There should have been extra frames. And uh, I'm not really sure what's going on with our AI men. I don't actually know if they can kill enemies. I'm going to assume that they can. They just don't seem to be very good at it. I know they can get downed. What, just like in Gears, if they take too many hits, they'll just go down on one knee. And I'm assuming you can pick them up as well. But if you don't pick them up, they just get up eventually anyway. Uh, yeah. Just like a like another game that we keep referencing. Now, you know, not every single game has to be a completely unique experience. And you know, nobody expects that. And I think, you know, to expect something completely new and unique and um, fresh every single time is just unrealistic as well. Because pretty much every idea you can think of has already been done. But when you rip a game so shamelessly, uh, I think it's hard to ignore the comparisons. Even the color palette's the same, you know. We're going through ruined, destroyed cities. It, yeah, it's all the same. Even the infected, they're just glowing, zombified enemies. Sounds a little bit like the Lambert, doesn't it? Hmm. Looks a lot like the Lambert as well. Oh, and the Lambert even explode when you kill them. <laughs> Wait a minute. Oh my God, it's worse than I thought. Uh, but, you know, as I said, yeah, even with all of its little foibles, uh, I did have myself some fun. And I'm definitely going to be going back to play more of this. And there is the tower looming in the distance. I'm not sure why there was such a long pause and a long delay before we actually went and uh, did what we was told. Kind of, kind of weird, but I suppose you know we're playing Mr. Cool Edge Master, so that's to be expected. Now that scene was actually not too bad, apart from the fact that the soldiers were using absolutely zero tactics at all, apart from literally throwing themselves against the machine guns. Which, you know, I guess that did happen in certain battles and things like that. But when there's apparently so few humans left, you would have thought they would try and uh, be a little bit smarter about it. And now the game is just now explaining to us how we can evade enemies and dodge roll. Exactly like Gears of War, by the way. Obviously. Um... I'm guessing what we have to do here is destroy all of these gun, gun turrets. Uh, it does take a hell of a lot of shots to destroy these gun turrets. And I, I mean a hell of a lot. Like, uh, yeah, <laughs> there isn't enough ammo that we're carrying to destroy all of these. Uh, which I very quickly realized, like, wait a minute. <laughs> and uh, as I was shooting that thing, I was thinking, can we... Is there is there a trick to this, or are we just supposed to shoot it? But nope, we just we just keep shooting it, shooting it and shooting it and shooting it until we run out of ammo. 
And here I was trying to work out what would be the best weapon to use. I suppose it would be the glaive, our standard weapon. Because I don't think the sniper rifle is going to be much cop here. We don't have anything else that's better. We're just taking a hell of a lot of damage here as well. I did try blind firing, but it's just... It's not accurate enough. Because these things take hundreds of thousands of shots as it is. Uh, and we don't hold that many. So I don't really want to be wasting them blind firing. And then I thought, oh, I wonder if you can destroy those big guns. Or is there something else you have to do? And it's like, well, you know, the crosshair goes red. So I'm assuming that means, you guessed it, we can shoot those things. But, um, I don't know, Chief. Because they literally seem to be soaking up a hell of a lot of ammo. Pretty much everything that I can throw at it, to be honest. So, let's go and try and find some. Now, our friends... Somebody pick up Shiro's Viper. Okay. So we have to go pick up Shiro's Viper. I mean, we don't know who Shiro is. I don't think he's actually been mentioned before. We found a very small bucket of ammo. And we're about to look for a Viper, which I'm not really sure what that is. I'm guessing it's a rocket launcher. But yep, yeah, as you can see, we were pulled out of what we were doing to be shown an animation, which we were killed in. <laughs> I was like, I'm out. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. This game was the Gears of War we have at home. Thanks for watching, guys.